Welcome to Odds Bodkin's Curiosity Shop, where you'll find the unique, the bizarre, and sometimes the haunted. Feel free to look around, peruse the items, and never fear. There's nothing here that bites. Hard, anyway. <laughs> well, hello there. So wonderful to see you return to Odds Bodkin's Curiosity Shop. As we are in the midst of the holiday season, we have the shop decorated with all sorts of baubles and trinkets and tinsel and garlands, a festive tree over by the fireplace. And if you'll notice, there are many gifts underneath that tree. And if you'll look right there, there is a gift with your name on it. But inside this box is a gift that cannot be purchased at any department store. This is a gift of horror, fantasy, and science fiction features to brighten or even darken any holiday season. So on this episode of Odds Bodkin's Curiosity Shop, let's pull out the kinetoscope as we take a look at yours truly's top 10 Horror, fantasy, and science fiction holiday favorites. So in the almost three years that I've been doing this podcast, I've really kind of stayed away from uh, lists. I, I, I don't like lists. Uh, I mean, in theory, I like them. Personally, I like them. I'm always interested to see what other people have to say about what the top 10 this or the top five that are. But I've always found lists are horribly subjective to whoever is creating the list's own personal taste. Or, or if you're going by things like just box office numbers alone or or things of that nature, that's all really all, only part of the tale as far as what makes a good movie or not. So I, I've always found lists to be, while fun and interesting, like I said, always very subjective. So I, I've tried to stay away from that myself. Who am I to say this is the number one movie or TV show in this subgenre of a uh, particular genre because my opinion is just my opinion and it's no different, no better, no worse than your opinion. And I guess that's how I decided on doing this, my top 10 favorite horror, fantasy, and science fiction Christmas movies because, yeah, it is my opinion. And if I frame it around that, these are just my personal top 10 then you know you can have your personal top 10 and maybe you can consider you know some of the entries that I've put on my list that maybe you hadn't thought about or maybe you hadn't watched and it will be a chance for you to say and uh, you know these are my favorites but I, I'm really interested in maybe checking out this one from his list or, or that one from his list so here we're going to look at my personal top 10 favorite holiday movies that uh, deal with the, the genres we talk about on this podcast, horror, fantasy, and science fiction. Hopefully you enjoy them. Hopefully you enjoy all the movies on my list. You may disagree with the ranking. You may disagree that this movie or that movie should be on the list, but that would be your personal list. And uh, you know, I'm always interested to hear that. So wherever we post this, I'll probably be posting this episode, of course, on our social media pages, Facebook and Instagram. I'd be interested to hear what your top 10 holiday movies, or even if you don't have 10, top five holiday movies uh, in horror, fantasy, and science fiction. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from you as to what uh, your favorites are and, and how they compare to mine. But right now we are going to take a look at my top 10 horror, fantasy, and science fiction a holiday favorites. And coming in at number 10 is a, it's a newer film. It came out a couple years ago, the British, like apocalyptic, dark comedy, Silent Night. Of course, it starred Keira Knightley, Matthew Good, Roman Griffin Davis, and I just love this movie. It's a movie I've only got to watch a couple times since it came out, but it's one of those movies that I want to watch more often because it's so grim and so dark for a holiday movie, for a Christmas movie set around Christmas time. The idea that there's this apocalyptic event coming and all of civilization is conceivably going to die is just a grim thing to be set around Christmas time in this 
group of the family and, and some friends having this last hurrah, this last Christmas dinner before the end of the world. It's so grim, but in an odd way, it it really helps you take stock and, and remind you what the most important things are in general, in the world at large, but especially around the holidays. And that's family and, and being with the ones you love, not the stuff, not the glitz and the glamour and the tinsel and all the bright lights. It's it's people that matter most. And I think like any good Christmas movie, uh, and generally speaking, Christmas movies with a good message, you got to have a good child actor. Some of the best movies, uh, whether it be holiday movies or, or movies in general, have a good child actor as the lead. Of course, Peter Billingsley as Ralphie in A Christmas Story, Barrett Oliver in Never Ending Story, Henry Thomas in E.T. I mean, uh, the list could go on and on, any of the kids from The Goonies. Uh, but that's one of the things I love about this movie is I think Roman Griffin Davis is, is such a wonderful actor, you know, as a young man. And, and as he grows, I, I'm excited to see how he develops as an actor because uh, he was really good in this and probably one of the reasons this movie is so endearing as a dark apocalyptic horror holiday film. Now, coming in at number nine, this may surprise people a little bit because this is a very, like... Uh, Christmas cookie, very sweet and lovable kind of movie, but it does play into the fantasy of Christmas and the fantasy of Santa Claus, and they do it really well. I think it's probably one of the reasons I like it, and they've got a, an actor who's no stranger to the horror genre. Of course, I'm talking about the Christmas Chronicles from 2018 that came out on Netflix starring Kurt Russell and I, I really like this movie, you know. I love horror, and I love all the grim and the darkness and the slashers and things like that. But I also have a soft spot, and I am a sucker for movies that are, are feel-good movies. And that's what this movie is. It, it really encapsulates the magic of Christmas, both literally and figuratively. Of course, you've got uh, Kurt Russell just plays a great, gruff and tough Santa Claus. You know, he's got like the, the red leather outfit. It's so opulent. It borders on ridiculous, but he pulls it off because he is such a, a fantastic actor. And then, of course, you have the, the kids in this. Judah Lewis is Teddy. Darby Camp is Kate. I, I thought those kids, again, like I said, uh, if you have really good kid actors in some of these movies, it really helps sell the nostalgia of Christmas's past. It helps sell the emotion and the heart of a movie. And I thought they both did a really good job with this movie. And uh, oddly enough, though, I have not seen The Christmas Chronicles 2, which is uh, that came out a couple years ago, I think in 2020. Uh, my wife and I plan on watching it this year because I introduced her to the, the first Christmas Chronicles uh, last Christmas. So looking forward to uh, sharing that sequel with her as well. Now, coming in at number eight, this one may be, I, I think some people might find this a little controversial as far as calling it a genre film. I, I think it does lean into fantasy because this Santa Claus is a traditional Santa Claus. And while they kind of went with an even rougher and even tougher and even more grisly and grizzled version of Santa Claus than, than Kurt Russell played in the Christmas Chronicles, I, I think 2020's film Fat Man does a really good job with making it kind of an action movie, uh, much in the, <laughs> in the way that uh, everyone considers Die Hard a Christmas movie. It's an action movie. This is a Christmas movie that does lean in to the action aspect of it. You've got a hitman trying to kill Santa Claus. But I think one of the cool things is they don't make Santa Claus so real that there is not that magic. That magic of Santa Claus, that magic of Christmas, they double down with like Santa Claus having actual elves working in his toy shop. And I, and I love it because it does really capture that, that magic of Christmas. It, it makes Santa Claus kind of a tough badass and it makes Santa Claus kind of a, you know, Mel Gibson playing Santa Claus, it felt very much like Martin Riggs meets Santa Claus and, and him playing Kris Kringle, I thought was, uh, was really interesting, really inspired, uh, and an, a really cool 
version of Santa Claus that, that you don't see a ton of. I think you're starting to see more of it, like Violent Night and some other things that are coming out recently, turning Santa Claus into, you know, he's gone from being the slasher killer to now he's the tough, badass action hero. <laughs> but I really liked him in this. Walton Goggins plays the hitman that's after Santa Claus. Just that guy, in my mind, can do nothing wrong from Vice Principals to The Hateful Eight, to anything I've seen him in. I really love him. I really love his performances and the, the different types of characters he plays. I mean, granted, he plays a an asshole in a lot of a lot of movies and a lot of TV, but he does it so well. And the and the rare chance you get to see him as a good guy is always as fun as well. So that's part of the reason why I like Fat Man so much, and the reason why it is on my top ten list of favorite horror, fantasy, and science fiction holiday films, Christmas films. Because this movie, while it is action, while it is gritty, while it is hardcore in that vein, it is also a fantasy because Santa Claus is very much, you're not stereotypical Santa Claus, but all the trappings of the magical Santa Claus that, that we know and love at the holiday times. Now, coming in at number seven on my list of my top 10 favorite Christmas holiday movies in horror, fantasy, and science fiction is a movie that, uh, it's a movie that came out 13 years ago, but it's not a movie I think a lot of people are aware of. And and I didn't even really become aware of this movie until the past few years. And as soon as I watched it, I fell in love with this movie and has become one of my, my holiday favorites. It's Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale from 2010. Now, this is a, a movie out of Finland. It's mostly in Finnish. Uh, there's a little bit of English in there. But it is such a wild ride and such a interesting take on Santa Claus and the Santa Claus lore. And I think that's probably one of the things I like about this is the fact that they, they dig into a darker lore behind Santa Claus. It almost feels... Like Santa Claus, like they combine Santa Claus and the Krampus lore into one figure where instead of Krampus being Santa Claus's shadow or, or things like that, it, it Santa Claus and Krampus are the same thing. Uh, there's no delineation between the two and makes Santa Claus a very menacing character. You know, when you, when you first think about it and Santa Claus is trapped in this tomb, if you haven't watched it, I'm not spoiling a whole lot, but then them ransoming Santa Claus and, and things like that, it almost comes across as Santa Claus of being a sympathetic character. But, but Santa Claus is not a sympathetic character when you look at the lore that they explore in this movie. And I, I thought it was really good. Again, it's, it's one of those movies that has a really good relationship between a child and a parent where you have Petri and uh, Rano. Uh, I'm probably butchering those names, but the son and the father and, and their relationship, they have a strained relationship because the mother is gone, uh, presumably passed away. I can't remember specifically if she's passed away, but you know, they're, they're trying to make it on their own. The father's trying to, to raise this kid on his own the best he can. Uh, the kid never feeling like he measures up to his father, like his father doesn't love like him because he's just not what his his father expects of him and there's a real heart to this and a real christmas message of of just loving one another and i love this movie i love the new and interesting yeah, i can't say new this is back from 2010 uh 13 years ago but it's a different take on the Santa Claus lore that that really captivated me when I first watched this. And it's a movie that I want to watch over and over because there's so much that I think I missed because you see a lot of the lore on the on the page and, and there's so many images that, that flash by. It, it really is an interesting story that you could probably watch over and over and pick up a little something different just from the lore that they introduce in this movie. Now, coming in at number six is a movie that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be surprised isn't higher on my list. And I have to say, you know, when I made this list, I had to really take stock in what I really looked for in a Christmas movie. And, well... There's a lot of things, especially horror, fantasy, and science fiction. Uh, they're just 
certain things that I'm looking for. From the horror aspect, I want to I want to be horrified. From the science fiction aspect, I want there to be a bit of science fiction. And there's not a ton of holiday movies out there, Christmas movies that take place in a science fiction world, unfortunately. Fantasy is the same way. I mean, fantasy, if you're talking about Lord of the Rings style fantasy, no, not so much. But uh, fantasy in the world of magic and make-believe and things, there's there's a, a bit more there. Uh, there's probably more there than any genre, uh, but horror really is a, is a very close second. And I ultimately had to tell myself that, you know, what I love in a Christmas movie, aside from the horror, I I do like some Christmas movies that have horror in them and that are straight up horror films. But ultimately, in a Christmas movie, I do want to have that feeling of hope and love and peace and all the Christmas warm and fuzzy feelings In one way or the other, I I have to have that. And that's probably the reason this film, while I love it, I love it as a Christmas movie. I love it as a a dark take on Christmas in a a Christmas film. It doesn't have that that hope, that, that joy, that heart that a lot of these other films have. I still love this film. I still watch it. Uh, maybe not every year. And, and I think. Once we get into the top five, you'll find that these are movies that I watch every year. This is a movie I don't necessarily watch it every year at Christmas time, but I watch it every couple years, every two, three years. I pull this one out and, and watch it because I do love it as a horror film, as a straight up horror film. And that's 1974's Black Christmas. It's such a, a fantastic Uh, perversion of a Christmas movie. Of course, Bob Clark, who went on to do uh, another Christmas story, uh, a Christmas story, (laughs) and and has become probably most known for that. But this has to be a close second as far as the, you know, the horror crowd goes. Uh, They love Bob Clark's Black Christmas, and I am no different. It's one of those films that really... Uh, revolves around Christmas. You can't get away from Christmas in this movie. Uh, But there again, like I said, while it is a good movie, it is a good uh, slasher movie, so to speak. Although I don't think most of the people get slashed in this. I think everyone gets strangled or suffocated in some some way, shape, or form. But it, I think, inspired the slasher craze of the late 70s and, and 80s. And this movie is responsible for that. It's responsible for... Halloween and Michael Myers. It's responsible for POV shots. And not that Bob Clark is the first person to do that in a, in a killer movie, but he popularized it in, like I said, the late seventies, everything we got there and, and into the eighties when slashers were kind of at their pinnacle. But it also had a great cast with Olivia Hussey, uh, Margot Kidder. And like I said, it, it doesn't have that hope and that joy and that Christmas spirit to it. It really is a good Christmas. If you're looking for straight up horror at Christmas time, you can't get any better than the Bob Clark's 1974 classic Black Christmas. Now, this next film in my top five, we're getting into the top five. Uh, this next film might surprise people as far as it being included in this list of my favorite horror fantasy and science fiction stories. But this story, while it wasn't the first Christmas ghost story ever told, I mean, uh, especially in Victorian times in England uh, and and even beyond that, uh, further back, you know, telling ghost stories at Christmas time is has been a huge tradition uh, in England and other parts of Europe, and it, it carried over to the United States. It wasn't really until probably more recently that Christmas became more, you know, the the Coca Cola Santa version of Christmas that we all that we all know these days. But but once upon a time, Christmas was about telling scary stories around the fire because you had the time of year where everything's dead it's snowing it's bleak outside the wind is howling there's strange noises you're huddled with your family around the fire and what better to to do than to to scare each other with scary stories but i think it was charles dickens who popularized the holiday while integrating it with those old notions of ghost stories at Christmas time, 
with his serialized story, uh, A Christmas Carol. And one of my favorite things to watch during the holiday season in horror, fantasy, and science fiction, and this definitely leans into a, uh, you know, as far as horror goes, it's not slashers, it's not blood and guts, but it is ghosts. And there are some scary moments. The the Jacob Marley scene uh, alone is, is the stuff of nightmares. But it, it leans into ghostly paranormal horror and it also leads into fantasy is 1984's A Christmas Carol starring George C. Scott. Has to be hands down my favorite adaptation of A Christmas Carol. Now some will say that Scrooge from 1951 starring Alastair Sim is the is the best and the most accurate adaptation. And I won't disagree with you there. Uh, and it is uh, probably of all the adaptations of A Christmas Carol. Uh, that's probably my second favorite. But I just love George C. Scott in this. Uh, I, I love all the actors. The Ghost of Christmas Present. Edward Woodward I thought was fantastic. Uh, Marley's Ghost. Uh, Frank Finley was was wonderful. And it has to be, you know, as a ghost story, uh, it, it's wonderful. As a story that gives you that, that Christmas spirit, uh, it, it's wonderful. And it does have some really creepy moments in it. As a story from, from Charles Dickens and as an adaptation in 1984 with A Christmas Carol, definitely one of my favorite things to watch. It's probably one of the movies that I watch every year. Uh, you know, there may be a year where I don't, but I'm usually back at it and watching it again the next year. But uh, definitely in my top five of favorite horror, fantasy, and science fiction to watch during the Christmas season. Now, coming in at number four is, I, I tell you what, 1984-85 uh, is going to get a lot of play in these next few ones. Because coming in at number four is 1985's The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. Now, this is such an interesting holiday special that I, the first time I saw it as a kid growing up, I absolutely fell in love with this because it was so different from any other movie or, or, or holiday special because it was the stop motion animation uh, of Rankin Bass from, from back in the 80s and of course they they did a lot of work in the 60s 70s and 80s but uh it, it was so different from anything else you had seen you know everything else was so by the book Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Santa Claus it was all very traditional and, and traditional stories but this took an interesting story from Frank L. Baum who of course wrote The Wizard of Oz his 1902 book uh, The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus and it was really interesting because he took the story of Santa Claus and gave it a, a new mythos and a new lore. And it all involved immortals and these bizarre creatures. And, you know, stop motion animation is always kind of creepy to begin with. I, I think that's why I always find those horror movies where they show a ghost or a monster kind of walking all herky-jerky. I think that's why that creeps me out so much is because of stop-motion animation from, from back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And it, it's creepy in and of itself. But then when you get all these fantastical creatures like Peter Nook and King Agua, the Wind Demons, and stuff like that, it was just all so bizarre and otherworldly, and it just set my imagination on fire. First time I watched this as a kid growing up, and I think that's why I love this so much, is because it's it's a non-traditional look at the the birth of Santa Claus, but it also has that that sense of of Christmas joy and spirit that that makes you realize you know what what's important in life and and the things that should matter most around the Christmas season. And of course, it's got some catchy little songs. That song about the little black cat with yellow green eyes just gets me every time. Now, coming in at number three on my top 10 list of horror, fantasy, and science fiction holiday favorites, my personal favorites, is another movie from that kind of 84, 85 era is none other than Gremlins. Of course, Gremlins was directed by Joe Dante, a horror icon, and written by Chris Columbus. 
And this has to be, hands down, one of my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, it was really hard to do this top three because all three movies in this top three probably, and probably depending on any given year, could move to, you know, this movie could uh, move to number one by next year or, or back down to number three or number two. Uh, I, the top three in my top ten favorites, horror, fantasy, and science fiction, uh, Christmas movies it, are, are very interchangeable because I love all these movies so much. And they're all three movies that I watch almost religiously every year. But but Gremlins is just a fantastic movie because, one, it is steeped in the holidays. Of course, you know, the dad gets gizmo for Billy as a Christmas present. You've got the heart-wrenching scene with Phoebe Cates talking about how her father died, you know, playing Santa and coming down the chimney getting stuck. I think as a kid, it really opened my eyes to Christmas is such a fun and happy time of year, especially when you're a kid, but you don't stop to think about all of the, the people that aren't so happy and the reasons why they're not happy around the holidays. And just, it, it worked on so many levels. It worked on a level of love and caring between the relationship of Gizmo and Billy. It worked in a, a sense of, you know, understanding people's pain during the holidays because there is a lot of that. It had all the trappings of Christmas. The scene where the gremlins are out singing Christmas carols in front of the, uh, the old lady, Mrs. Deagle's house, was just uh, it's a piece of comedic brilliance. And I have to say that one thing is it's a horrifying tale because these little creatures running around are are quite horrifying, the, the thought of it. But it also has a, a lot of humor, a lot of black comedy about it. And it is, you know, it's got some grossness to it. It'll, you know, quasi body horror, if you will. But as I said, it has all those things while still having uh, a bit of that Christmas spirit, a bit of that Christmas heart that that I'm looking for in a Christmas movie. And that's why Gremlins is definitely in my top three as I said earlier, could be number two, could be number one. At, at any given moment, uh, I, I do change my mind quite a bit. Uh, actually, there was a movie that was in this. I'm going to put it in my honorable mentions, which we'll do before number one. And uh, it got bumped out at the last minute for something else. But uh, Gremlins definitely locked in at number three this year on my top ten favorite horror, fantasy, and science fiction holiday uh, movies. Now, coming in at number two has to be a guilty pleasure of mine is always anthology films. And for me, there doesn't get any better a horror anthology film for Christmas than A Christmas Horror Story, which came out in 2015. For me, this is definitely one of those movies. I watch this almost religiously every year. There are so many great stories in this. The story about the kid who goes missing and is replaced by the changeling. The kid's locked in the, the school. The family going to visit the rich aunt. The whole through line with William Shatner and Norman I think is is brilliant I guess you could call that uh the through line a and there's a through line B that that has to deal with Santa Claus and Krampus and it's all just so brilliantly done and brilliantly tied together. There's so much horror, but there's so much heart behind some of these stories that it plays into the horror more than the heart, but it's still such a, a wonderful tale and so steeped in Christmas that, you know, you never once forget you're watching a Christmas horror story, you know, like the name says. And I think that's probably one of the things I like most about it. And even though it doesn't have quite the heart that some of my other favorites do, it has just enough and it has so much of the horror that is done so well. I mean, there's there's so many great practical effects in this and practical creatures. And I think that's why this is one of my favorite uh, Christmas movies is because they did so much of this right. There's so much of it that could have been done wrong. They could have relied too much on CG. They could have gotten away from Christmas at, at any point and made you forget you're watching a Christmas story, but they didn't. They just went both feet in and really went for it on all aspects. And 
I think that's why it's done so well. And the acting is pretty good as well. I, I have to say that uh, I really enjoyed a lot of the performances. I don't really think there was any bad performances in this for having a lot of actors that I'm not familiar with outside of outside of William Shatner. So that's my number two pick in my top 10 list of genre Christmas movies, uh, horror fantasy, and science fiction. Now, I did say there are some honorable mentions, and one of the honorable mentions was actually on the list at number 10, but at the last minute, I realized, you know what, I kind of left out Silent Night, so uh, Silent Night replaced that. It, it was the odd man out, but as I said, I'm very fickle and am prone to changing my mind at the last minute, and I did, but what it replaced is a movie that I love this movie for... Probably all all the right reasons and all the wrong reasons. And the first of our two honorable mentions is 1964's Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. This is such a ridiculous movie, and it's it's low budget. It was done on the cheap, but it's just it's such a fun movie. Uh, of course, you have John Call as Santa Claus. You have all the Martians. I, I think it is the the Martian played by Bill McCutcheon. Uh, uh, Droppo. <laughs> just, it cracks me up. It's so stupid and ridiculous, but it's such a fun, probably the only science fiction, the true science fiction holiday film uh, in my list or even close to being on my list. I think that's probably why I overlooked Silent Night at number 10 because I wanted like a straight up sci-fi uh, entry and I tried to shoehorn Santa Claus Conquers the Martians into this, but at last moment, I thought better of it because Let's let's be honest. Silent Night is the better movie, but still, uh, this if you're looking for science fiction holiday classics, this is probably the best way to go. Santa Claus versus the Martians, and the other honorable mention is a movie that I had not watched in the few years that I've known of its existence. Uh, my wife and I sat down the other night to watch a movie. I was like, we need to watch a Christmas movie because we didn't watch hardly any Christmas movies last year together. And, and I want to, you know, sit down and, and enjoy a Christmas movie with my wife. And, you know, she is more into rom coms and, and musicals. I'm more into horror, fantasy, and science fiction. So we compromised and watched Anna and the Apocalypse from 2017. And, Oddly enough, I, I think we both really enjoyed this movie. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if I were to do a top 10 list next year, I wouldn't be surprised if this movie wouldn't move into the top 10 because I really enjoyed it. And it's a movie that I could see myself watching again because it, it just had all of the right... It, it felt like Shaun of the Dead meets... Glee meets any kind of generic Christmas movies, you know, any kind of generic Hallmark Christmas movie. I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just making this up as I go. But it is actually a really fun movie. It has everything you want about Christmas in it. It has really good acting. I really enjoyed all of the acting. I'm not a huge fan of musicals. Not that I don't like musicals. I just, it has to be something that I can relate to and something I can enjoy for me to, to like a musical. And I actually enjoyed the music. My wife, the whole time, she's like, you're hating this, aren't you? I was like, no, I'm actually enjoying it. The songs were fun. The songs were catchy. And, you know, just that kind of ridiculousness of, of a musical where everybody breaks out into song and dance. And then all of a sudden the music ends and then they're just back about their business. Uh, it, it's kind of silly. But it was a fun silly. It was a holiday silly. It had some gore and some blood and some guts and some ridiculous kills. And it was it was a fun holiday romp as, I don't know, the kids probably don't say that. I don't know who says that. I'm saying it and I'm attributing to someone other than me. So a uh, fun holiday romp is what I'm giving Anna and the Apocalypse and why that movie is definitely an honorable mention on my my top 10 list of horror fantasy and science fiction holiday movies. Now, coming in at number one on my list of horror fantasy and science fiction holiday movies is none other than another film from 2015. Uh, of course, A Christmas Horror Story, a Canadian film, this one filmed in New Zealand. And it is none other than 2015's Christmas. Krampus, my favorite horror fantasy or science fiction holiday film, and 
ever since I watched this, I couldn't wait to get it on DVD. And it is definitely the one Christmas movie that I, again, much like uh, A Christmas Horror Story, much like Gremlins, I watch this religiously every year. And it is such a wonderful movie. Uh, of course, uh, Michael Doherty directs this. Uh, was a part of the writing team, uh, went a workshop in New Zealand, did a lot of the special effects and the creature design, and just a wonderful story because I think this hit just as the Krampus craze was starting. And I think this movie really springboarded the, the Krampus craze that we have in the United States right now. I mean, how many shitty, cheap, uh, low-budget Krampus movies out there with shitty prosthetics and shitty CG do we have? And and even beyond that, I think you have a lot of popular culture and society embracing the idea of Krampus. And I love it. A buddy of mine down in North Carolina has a shop called Odd Duck Oddities, Curiosities, Horror and Games. And they celebrate Krampus. And ha- instead of having Santa Claus, kids can come and sit in Santa Claus laps. Uh, they can uh, come and sit on Krampus's lap and uh, part of parades and things like that. And it's such fun because, you know, sometimes horror fans, uh, yeah, it can get a little much with the whole, like I said, the Coca-Cola Santa and the rosy red cheeks and the ho-ho-hos and the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeers and and happy joy joy and the lots of, you know, sickening sweet candy cane type holiday fun being, you know, shoved down our throat. Sometimes we want things a little darker and, and Krampus does that. It doesn't take away from Santa Claus, it doesn't take away from Christmas, but it adds a darker twist on the Christmas story and, and Krampus, I think, is is a, a wonderfully dark and disturbing character and a character that teaches you some morals and teaches you to value things, especially the way they frame it in this movie, Krampus from 2015. I really enjoyed the cast. I thought the cast was all really good. MJ Anthony as Max, like I said earlier, when you have a a really good kid actor as the focal point of your story, it, it just allows you to play on emotions a lot more. And, of course, Adam Scott, Tony Collette, David Koechner. Just a a wonderful cast uh, of characters and actors. And, like I said, Weta doing a lot of the the special effects and the the creature designs and and things of that nature. And it was spooky as hell. I mean, there was a lot of scary moments in this movie. There was a lot of fun and comedy. uh, You know, dark comedy, black comedy. But there was also a lot of creepy, scary moments. And I don't know if I heard this right, that maybe Michael Doherty's uh, talking about maybe a sequel to this movie. Uh, I really hope so because I enjoyed it so much. But uh, but it's a movie that doesn't need a sequel because it, it stands alone. It stands the test of time. And it's a movie that I can sit down and watch each and every Christmas and enjoy it just as much as the first time. Because like I said, when it's all said and done, it has that dark almost Twilight Zone type ending, but it also teaches you something about Christmas. It teaches humanity and society something about themselves and what they put stock in around the holiday season and and what they should be stock, putting stock in, like Scrooge, not just on Christmas, but the whole year round, uh, having that Christmas spirit of love and charity and, and giving and peace and that's a message that i'm gonna get behind every time and the fact that they put it into a great package with creepy special effects creepy story scares laughs and a a, a really good backbone of a story on a character that has had so much lore behind it that is why this as of right now as of this moment my favorite horror fantasy or science fiction holiday film on my top 10 list. This is definitely number one. So I want to thank everyone for listening to my top 10 horror fantasy and science fiction holiday favorites. Uh, Again, like I said, these are my personal favorites. 
you may agree with me. You may not agree with me. You may agree with some of the selections, but the, the order may be different on your list. But regardless, these are my favorites. I'm not saying these are the best 10 best horror movies or, or fantasy or science fiction movies for the holidays of all time. Just like I said, my personal favorites. But I'd love to hear from you. Uh, no matter where you're listening to this podcast, uh, please check us out on our social media pages, Odds Bodkin's Curiosity Shop on Facebook and on Instagram. I You'll find a link to our link tree and, and you can get uh, all the links to those in the description. But, uh, but go to our Facebook page, go to our Instagram page, find our post about this episode and in the comments, tell us your top 10 favorite horror, fantasy and science fiction holiday films. You may have a list similar to mine. You have, may have a list completely different than mine. And, and I would love to see that. I would love to see what you had on your list because I, I would maybe reconsider my list next year. Who knows? Uh, maybe you seen something that I haven't seen and I might uh, might go check it out and it may change my life. Maybe something on this list has has made you rethink what your top 10 would be. So I, I would really love to hear from you and, and see what your favorites are as well. So if you get a chance to go to our social media pages and, and let us know what uh, what your top 10 horror, fantasy, and science fiction holiday favorites are. So again, I want to thank everyone for listening to my top 10 horror, fantasy, and science fiction holiday favorites. You can check out more at Odds Bodkin's Curiosity Shop on our Facebook page and our Instagram page, always posting about horror, fantasy, and science fiction and the latest episodes. Please, wherever you listen to this podcast, uh, like, follow, subscribe to it, uh, leave a review, five stars would be awesome, but whatever review you leave, we do appreciate that. And as always, share this podcast with anyone that you know that loves horror fantasy and science fiction coming up on monday's show we're going to talk about the new movie a creature was stirring starring chrissy metz scout taylor compton as of recording this episode i still haven't watched it yet but but it looks pretty good but good bad or indifferent i'm gonna watch it we're gonna talk about it on monday's show then coming up next Thursday, the 21st, we are going to have our Christmas special. And then uh, we're, we're going to be off on Christmas Day, Monday, the 25th. We're going to have our year in review episode coming up on uh, December the 28th. That's a Thursday. And then, of course, uh, New Year's Day, we're going to be off that day as well. So you can spend your time with your, your family and your friends and the people that are important to you on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. So we got a few more episodes left in 2023 and looking forward to, to all of those and hopefully you are as well so until next time thank you for visiting odds bodkins curiosity shop we hope that you found something to your liking and visit the shop again soon but even though you may come back you never really get to leave odds bodkins curiosity shop ha 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 ha